How's it going guys? Andrew here with Justified EDC and I got another new knives and gear video for you here. I got several new things that have just come in or have come in over the last couple of weeks and I haven't uh, been able to show it off yet. Um, but lots of stuff to go over here. Um, I just, uh, you'll have to forgive me if I sound a little exasperated. I just got done trying to clear up some storage on my phone to be able to continue filming videos. I've been at it for a couple hours now and uh, kind of worn out, but I wanted to get this video out for you guys. Um, there are several reviews uh, coming down the line of things that I've already shown off that are just about ready uh, to do some reviews. So those will be coming soon, but I wanted to give you an update on some of the things that have come in recently. So uh, let me just set this stuff aside uh, so we can start talking about some things individually. But as always, before we get started, I have to thank the sponsor of the channel, Auxiliary Manufacturing. Um, in the chaos that is my desk right now, I've kind of lost my card here that usually has his logo on it. But Mike over at Auxiliary Manufacturing is an awesome sponsor of the channel. He makes awesome custom USA made fixed blades like this pocket Bowie and this Sumi. He's got a couple drops coming up soon at the time of the release of this video. So if you're interested, I do have a discount code with him. Code JUSTIFIED10 will get you 10% off your order on his website. Uh, so I will leave links down in the description to his Instagram, his website, and the discount code and all that if you're at all interested. And thank you as always to Mike for sponsoring the channel. Uh, so the first thing we want to get out of the way here, just because one, it's big, and I just want to be able to set it aside and have more desk space, is this is a new holster from Range Holsters over on Instagram. So a uh, new guy doing Kydex bending for holsters and stuff like that. Um, he had reached out to me on Instagram and asked if he could send something over for me to review. So uh, very thankful for that. Uh, thank you to him for sending this over. This is a really interesting holster. So let me get these out here so we can talk about how I had been carrying and how this is a little bit different. So if you guys weren't familiar, one, I'm not usually a big fan of sidecar holsters. Uh, usually I like carrying in a, you know, individual holster appendix inside the waistband and then with a detached mag carrier. Whoops, just dropped that on the ground. Um, with a detached mag carrier so that, you know, it kind of moves with your body. You can put it at whatever position you want it. Um, this one happens to be from Superstition Concealment. It's really great. You can adjust the angle. You can flip it to either side. So you can kind of adjust what angle you want to have it carried at. And then you can put the holster wherever you want on your waistband in conjunction to that. So that is normally how I carry. Um, but he offered to send me over this holster right here, which is kind of a hybrid uh, between a couple different things. And it's got a couple different things going for it that I think are really interesting. So one, um, it looks a little bit big. You know, I was kind of uh, concerned looking at it. And I was like, that's going to be a lot down inside your waistband. I'm not sure how that's going to work out. But one, it is actually pretty comfortable. It's definitely more holster that I'm used to having. Again, you know, as the you know sidecar style, um, it's a little bit big, but it's actually not that uncomfortable. The other thing that I noticed, you know, no mod wing or anything like that, but actually because of the curvature of the holster and how he has this molded in here for the X300, this in conjunction with the curvature of the holster actually does a really nice job of tucking it into your, uh, into your waistband and concealing. So normally you have that concealment wing like this here, this mod wing that presses up against your belt and tucks the holster into your body a little bit more. But with the light mold like that, that actually does kind of act as a wing and tuck this into your body. Again, with the holster being uh, curved and having the pressure of this as well, it does a just fine job of concealing. So that was not a problem. The other thing here, you can see this bungee cord here, this is how the mag carrier is attached. So you actually can, you know, take the shot cord off and completely remove that mag holster um, if you want to just run this as an individual holster. And then the other cool thing about it is, you know, I forgot to grab these out of here before I started, but if you wanted to, you could take off this mag carrier, you could take off the mono block, and then he sent these two clips here this one and this one that you can actually run on here. And then you can run this as an outside the waistband holster as well. So if you want to take the mono block off, take the mag carrier off, then you could run it at, you know, three, four o'clock, something like that outside the waistband. You could do that as well. So it's very modular, which is really neat. Um, I don't know if, you know, I'm going to carry this for a while. One to, you know, just try out the, uh, the appendix carry with the sidecar, but Long term, I'm not sure if it's going to replace my daily carry like this, but it is really neat to be able to um, 
you know, kind of have a modular holster that you can now carry as a sidecar, carry on its own, carry it detached, or carry it outside the waistband. It's kind of a one-size-fits-all. You know, if you just wanted to buy one kit and be able to carry a bunch of different ways, this would be a really cool option. The other thing I like about this, as opposed to a lot of sidecar holsters, is a lot of sidecar holsters have a clip on the holster and the clip on the uh, mag carrier, which, you know, you, you would think, you know, it would be more stable like that. And I think if you just had like a single uh, clip or like a single DCC clip, it might be a little unstable. But the monoblock does a really good job of keeping the holster stable. And then because this doesn't have a clip on it and it's attached by the bungee cord, it does have a little bit of give to it where it kind of can still move with your body. That doesn't look like a lot of movement just here on camera, but when you're actually wearing the holster, it's just enough so that the holster can, or the mag carry can kind of can and move with your body. And also because there's not a clip here keeping it one at one height, it can kind of dip down below and sit kind of lower on your waistline, which I kind of like. Um, so I'll, when I do an actual in-depth review of this, you know, I'll show it, you know, with me carrying it and everything like that. So you can kind of see more in depth of how that works. Uh, but just wanted to show this off, show that this is going to be a holster review that's coming. Um, just so you guys know what's coming down the pipeline, but really cool holster from range holsters. You'll see more of that later. I do actually have several holster reviews coming down the line. Um, the next one you're going to see maybe after this video is the Harry's Holsters Infiltrator for the Glock. Um, I have those Hammer Forge J-Frame grips that will be coming down the road. Obviously the Range Holster and then um, Hell, uh, Hellhound Arms on Instagram, um, who a couple people have turned me on to. They're sending me a holster for the 17 as well for me to check out. So a couple holster reviews coming down the uh, road there for you gun guys if you're at all interested. So let's get into knives. We got a couple traditionals here that uh, this isn't anything you know new or crazy or anything. I just wanted to show them off. Um, I don't even know if any of these are going to be getting a review or anything like that. They probably won't, to be completely honest. But you'll probably see them in my EDC updates, and you'll see them on Instagram. So I figured I would show them off. So the first two here, I got these from someone on Instagram. This is a Case Barlow. And it is, it's special in a couple ways. One, it's the single blade uh, Barlow, which if you know, I also have one of the double bladed ones where you have the clip point blade and the little pen blade. But this is a single blade, significantly thinner, obviously, because you're taking that one blade out. Uh, but this is a this is actually a really really nice example of what Case is capable of doing. Um, there's no gapping at all. Everything is very flush on the close and on the open. There's no blade play. Very nice, crisp walk and talk, and it does have a half stop which I really like when case knives do that. Right here, you got the amber jig bone with the bolster. Um, I just think it looks really nice. It's decently centered. Like, if all case knives came like this, I'd be way more apt to recommend them. But, you know, their quality control recently can be a little shoddy. But this one in general is very, very nice. Um, I really like uh, bone and stag handles, so I've been trying to get more traditionals like that. So when I saw this one up for sale, um, I had to snag that. Um, I'll probably end up, actually, I think I do have this posted up for sale on Instagram. So if you're interested in a double-bladed uh, Case Barlow, this one is also very well done, you know, fit and finish wise. So if you're interested in this one, go hit me up on Instagram. I have that one for sale. And the other one that this came with, uh, this was just an extra that he threw in. This is an older USA-made Camillus. Um, I don't even know what you would call this pattern. Um, it almost is like, if you know, if you took out the second blade, it's almost like a Zulu pattern, but it's got that... You know, spear point, drop point, almost Victorinox blade shape. And then you say New York, USA. I put a new edge on this one because the edge that it came with was really, really beat up. But it has half stops. And then on this side, you have this tool, which actually is on a liner lock, which is really cool. And also has half stops. So it's really old. You can see it's a lot. It's really beat up. Uh, but you know these old traditionals really, really hold up. I don't really know what the exact purpose or name of this tool is. Like it's beveled down here, not to an edge. You probably could sharpen up a portion of that, but you can see it thickens up towards the tip. And then on the back side here, it's a little bit beveled. So screwdriver, pry bar, whatever. I'm sure it has a dedicated purpose that I'm just not aware of. So if any of you guys are familiar with this model and you know what that is, let me know. But I just thought that was neat too. Uh, so we can get those out of the way. 
And then the last one here out of the traditionals is if you recognize that shield right there, this is a Remington silver bullet knife. Um, so if you're not familiar with the Remington silver bullet line, that's a line that Remington releases every year and they usually have different companies make them. This is one of the older ones. I believe this is one that's from the 80s. Um, back when they were still being made in the U.S. So I'm not sure exactly who was making these. Um, I know GEC has made some over the years. I think some of the old, you know, like Queen Cutlery and stuff like that have made some of them. The recent ones have be become imports and they're a lot cheaper. They're not very nice. Um, but this one is really, really nice. Again, U.S. made... I don't know if this is a stainless or a carbon steel yet. I haven't tried to get a patina on these blades yet, but they're nicely finished. The edges are all decent. They have half stops, which I like a lot. So you have your clip point blade and your spay blade like that. Half stops on both. I really like the handle shape. Um, and then these are Delrin handles. So they're a faux, you know, jigged bone, but I think they look pretty nice for Delrin. Fit and finish is all pretty nice. No gapping or anything like that. The only thing that I've noticed right off the bat is that these brass liners are a little bit sharp. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that. But that's easy enough for me to you know take a little diamond file or a piece of sandpaper and just smooth those over. So a really cool, almost like, you know, trapper uh, blade pattern. I'm not really sure what the handle pattern would be considered. Um, so again, if you guys know, let me know. But uh, I just thought that was a really cool one. I've wanted a Remington silver bullet knife that's made in the U.S. for a while. I just love their silver bullet shield. Uh, but this is a really cool one. So, again, I doubt I'll do any necessarily in-depth reviews on those traditionals. Um, you might see them and maybe I'm, I, at some point I might do kind of like a group review of some traditionals. Um, but uh, you'll definitely see them in EDC updates and everything like that. The next folder here, I guess the last folder, this is one that I've been wanting for a while. This is a Cold Steel Mini Recon 1. So if you're familiar with the full-size Recon 1, much larger knife made by Cold Steel. It's got the triad lock, same thing here, uh, but much larger. I think it's like a four, four and a half inch blade. Um, this one here, you're coming in at about a two and three quarter cutting edge. Back to the handle, you're like right at three inches. So much smaller, more EDC size knife. The G10 also isn't as aggressive as the uh, Recon. This one feels very much kind of like the G10 that comes on like the Spyderco Power Military series um, where it's got some grip, but it's not going to tear your pockets up. Cold Steel is really known for their pocket clips, absolutely shredding pockets because of the aggressive G10. And I don't think this one's going to be as bad. Um, but if you're at all familiar with the Recon series, you got the large one, you have the mini, and then you have the micro. The micro is almost like, I think they advertise like a keychain knife size. It's like a one and a half inch blade. It's really tiny. It's more of a novelty knife in my mind. But this is kind of like the EDC size of the Recon knives. Um, this one, again, the I think all of the Recon series are Taiwan made, so they're imported from Taiwan. Uh, this one is an Aus 10A. Nothing crazy, but uh, Cold Steel does their uh, heat treat pretty well. I, really, really nice factory edge. That's one thing that I always appreciate about Cold Steel is that their factory edges are really, really nice. I liked the clip point shape. And then I did end up modifying the handle here. So uh, if you go and Google what the uh, Recon 1 Mini looked like originally, uh, the guard up here was much more pointed, and then this uh, hump here in between these two finger trails was much more pronounced. Um, and it kind of forced you into just this grip here. So you're kind of far away from the blade. You can't really choke up. It pinches you here. If you try to use it in like kind of odd grips, both of those uh, humps kind of dug into your hand. So I just took a Dremel and I dremeled down that hump and this one. And now you can kind of choke up right to get right behind that blade. And you can also kind of move your hand up and down the handle to get a little bit more uh, variety in your grip. So, you know, saber grip, hammer grip, edge in, reverse grip edge out, reverse grip edge in. You can do a lot more different grips with it now. Um, so this is one I've wanted for a while. You know, I like cold steel. I like clip points. Uh, the triad lock is cool. 
Um, but yeah, really cool little knife. Definitely going to be carrying this, and I, I might do a review on this. Let me know if you guys are interested in hearing a review on this one or not. Again, I'm definitely going to have some critiques on the handle, but it's easy enough to modify. Um, this one, they are, they're like partial liners inside there, so you have plenty of work to uh, plenty of room to work on that G10 if you kind of want to shape it down to what you want. But yeah, let me know if you want to see a full review on that or not. I'd be happy to do one. Uh, if not, you'll probably just see this in some EDC updates because I do like this knife quite a bit. All right, I'm going to put that back in my pocket because I was carrying that. Uh, the next thing here a fixed blade this is made by william well it's designed by williams uh, uh blade design james williams you know you probably know him from a lot of his crkt collaborations but he also has his own line um, of these fixed blades some of them are made by lion steel like this one here and then he has some that are made by winkler as well this one i always forget the the name this is the ozm002 this is the version that has about a three and a half inch blade. Um, it's made of Sleipner steel, has a black DLC coating on it. And then my card of handles here, it's a hidden tang. So you get the feeling of like a, um, uh, almost like a stick tang with like a, a molded on handle. Uh, so it's my card all the way around. You don't feel that tang at all. Very, very comfortable handle. Very, very grippy. This is definitely a, a defensive blade first and foremost. Uh, your stock is pretty thick. It's a very thick flat grind. As you can see, I have been using this just, you know, I wanted to see, you know, what it could do for a utility knife. But uh, this is not going to be a super slicer, not even really a slicer at all. This is meant to poke holes in things that need holes poked in them. Um, the one thing you're probably seeing here is I'm missing a screw. They have they put this like domed screw on the middle as like an index point. Um, I did not like that at all. One uh, on the sheath that I hear that I've been using with it most, it doesn't fit. But also just kind of feels weird in hand. I don't know why they didn't just put like a divot in this in my, the my carter or something like that. Because like with this hole here, you can just as easily index and feel that hole as you could with something protruding. So I just took that screw out. There's still these two being bolted on here, this one's still attached. So there's no, uh, um, you know, the handles aren't gonna come off or anything like that, but that screw just bothered me, so I took it out. Uh, but this is a really, really cool blade. I've been wanting one of the Williams uh, design blades that wasn't a CRKT for a while. I'd still love to get one of the Winkler ones, but this one is made very nicely from Lion Steel. I'm probably gonna put my own edge on it, see if I can lay that edge angle back a little bit and get it to cut a little bit better. Um, but it is a really, really cool defensive fixed blade. The sheet that it comes with is set up for horizontal carry. Absolutely excellent retention, no rattle or anything like that. You can tell by the way they've molded it um, that it's not touching the Kydex. And then you have a thumb push off point here. So snaps in and out very easily, very easy to just draw from the sheath. And then I, you, as always, you guys know I like offensive industry sheaths, so I just took one of these that I've been using for something else, remolded it so that I can carry it in the pocket. At some point, I might just get Josh to make me uh, one of uh, his sheaths for specifically for this knife, so I can you know return the sheath to its formal uh, formal use. But that's how I've been carrying it. Uh, really, really cool knife. You're definitely going to want something you know a little bit thinner and slicier. Uh, something like this you can actually use for utility and just ca carry this as a uh, backup defensive tool but definitely a cool knife i will do a full review on that at some point and then the last one here is a model that i just discovered existed this is the hogue extract xl so if you're not familiar hogue may has a uh, has had the extract the regular one out for a while now. It's slightly smaller than this one, but it's an ultra lightweight, thin, um, it's designed to be like a backpacking skinning knife. Um, so super thin blade stock, uh, G thin G10 handles. The, the, the normal extract is even thinner than this one. And this one is very, very thin stock. I'll have to measure all of that, you know, for the actual review. And then it's in M4 blade steel. You also can get the extract XL in Magna Cut, which is cool. Um, but I saw this one up on the secondary for, you know, a, a decent discount and it's like unused. Uh, so I definitely wanted to pick one up. I love clip point blades. I love M4 steel. Hogue always does a nice job. This is made in the USA. The G10 is nice and grippy. It's got really great pinch points right here because, again, it's designed to be like a skinning knife. Um, and then Hogue puts absolutely insane factory edges on their knives. There's some of the 
they probably are the best factory edge I've ever gotten. Like, they're just absolutely deadly sharp right from the factory. Um, they do a really, really nice job. It doesn't even look like, you know, the normal factory grind lines. It looks like actually like a polished edge. So they did a really, really nice job with this. The only thing that I don't like is it only comes with this like blade guard. Um, it does click in very securely and it does have a lashing point down here. You could carry it like static line or something like that, but there's no way to mount a clip or anything like that. Um, so I've just been kind of dropping this in the pocket and, you know, just grabbing it out of the sheath when I want to use it. You can kind of use this hook here to catch on your pocket and use like a pocket hook sheath. Um, but not my favorite. I wish it came with a Kydex sheath. The normal extract, the smaller one now, does come with both this blade guard and just a fold over Kydex sheath with an ulti clip. I wish the extract XL was coming with that as well. Um, I saw some comments on Hogue social media that says they're working on getting sheaths with these, but really, I, I think that this should come with a sheath from the factory. Um, but, and then the other problem is that these are newer, uh, so really no one's making aftermarket sheaths for them. So I might have, again, I might have Josh make me a, uh, a, a deep carry sheath or, you know, an inside the waistband sheath or something like that, just so it's a little bit easier to carry. But the knife itself is awesome. It's super thin, so you're not going to want to do, like, a whole lot of, like, chopping or, like, really hard bushcraft stuff with it. But that really, really thin geometry, the full flat grind comes down to a really, really thin edge. Um, this is going to be an absolutely awesome, you know, if you wanted to use it as a skinning knife, obviously that's what it's designed for. That's going to work great. And the Magna Cut one will probably be even better because uh, it's stainless. But with this DLC coating on here, uh, you're just going to be able to blow through material with this. It's going to slice super, super well. So very excited about this one. I've wanted to extract for a while, and then I saw the Extract XL pop up on the secondary. I didn't even know they were making a larger version. So very excited about that, but that's about it, guys. I uh, just wanted to get this video out for you guys so you can see, you know, some of the new stuff that's coming up for review. Uh, these three things especially will be getting their own review. I might do one on the Mini Recon 1 if you guys are at all interested. And then the traditionals, those will just show up in some, you know, EDC videos and everything. So uh, leave anything down in the comments section if you have any questions, concerns, you want to, uh, any opinions or anything like that. Just let me know what you guys think of this video. Thank you as always for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video.